Very warm evening. Welcome. This is Sports Zone. It's live on Joy Prime every Monday from 9 p.m. till 10.30. Reviewing the best of the weekend sports in action from the world of sport. And it's big. This weekend, of course, we have some Ghana Premier League for you. The Black Stars players have also started training ahead of that crucial game on Thursday. All of that to come. Plus, in the Premier League, well, it's Liverpool that go into the international break riding pretty at the top of the table. The spoils were shared when Chelsea took on Forest. Man City showed grit, and thanks to Adama Traore's wastefulness, they secured three points. Arsenal joined them to stay right behind Liverpool, just a point behind. Kai Harvest, Mr. Happy, continues to show his true form. Elsewhere, the troubles are Man United showing no signs of abating after yet another draw, signaling what is now documented as Manchester United's worst ever start to a Premier League season, supervised by Eric Ten Hag, who still has a job. In Spain, has Kylian Mbappe's introduction to Real Madrid thrown the team's balance off? Or are Madrid's problems much deeper? And I say problems because they're only just a few points behind Barcelona, but they have not been playing great. Barca, on the other hand, don't have any such problems. A first half hat trick from Robert Lewandowski has had in top of the table. But it's baptism of fire after the international break with back-to-back -back games against Sevilla, Real Madrid, and Bayern Munich. And they survived that test. So we'll have all of that here on the show in the next hour and a half. And of course, we'll have Guinness Match Corner, where Daniel Cranston will tonight take a dive into Manchester City's game plan against Fulham. Remember, of course, that this show is live and interactive. It is yours, okay? So do send us a message uh, to our WhatsApp numbers. we will put them on the screen for you. Uh, and uh, of course, also, if you want to join us on social media, we prefer Twitter or X. Just leave me a message with the hashtag SportsZone, and we will read those messages for you. Remember, this show is proudly brought to you by Syntex Tank, a strong, a tough Kivo, Four in one Gary mix, a Mac Gary Sokis, a yet the dead Guinness. Yes, we can. And of course, very soon we'll be introducing you to a brand new sponsor as well here on the show. But we'll take a very short break here on Sports Zone. My name is Fentio, Tahir Fentio. When we come back, I will introduce my guest here, and then we can go straight into showing you some highlights. Welcome back. This is uh, Sports Zone. It's live on Joy Prime. My name is Fentio Tahir Fentio. The show is sponsored by Syntex Tank. As you can see, if you're looking for water tank for any kind of project, make sure that water tank is from Syntex Tank. They have the water tanks in all kinds of colors, uh, all kinds of layers for you as well. They have over 300 ages nationwide, so you will not lack uh, any source of uh, buying a Syntex Tank, okay? Uh, they will deliver it to you as well, all right? So also, Kivo Gary 4-in-1 mix, all right? It's got Gary in there, sugar is in there, milk is in there, and granite is in there. It's 4-in-1. All you need to do is just pour it into uh, a small container, add water, stay it, and then you're good to go. Also by uh, Guinness, also proud sponsors of this show uh, as well. Uh, Guinness, yes, we can. And Guinness sponsor a segment on this show called Match Day. We'll get into it. But my guys are here, Daniel Kranti and Sicho for Philip Achim. Guys, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Good to see you guys, man. Always good to see you. Today, earlier today, I said it. Okay, earlier today, I got, I went to, I went for a meeting at um, on the Dodoa Road. Yeah. Okay, and these guys gave me this really nice bottle of water, and they have a lot of them. They produce them. They're called Piva beverages. Oh. My favorite thing about the bottle is how light it is, recyclable. Mm. Okay. They are the proudly. New sponsors of this show. Whoa, welcome, 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 yeah. my man. Yeah, man. Welcome to the family, yeah, Piva. Man. Yeah, Piva. Man. And they've got like 
Piva Cola, Piva Orange, Piva. Oh, everything. lovely stuff. Yeah. Walk so, out to the party. Yeah. When, when they finish, when everything is said and done, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll piva, we'll piva but suddenly, friends. this is now my favorite. This is now my favorite bottle of water. I like, I like yeah, yes. I, I like, I like, I like how the bottle looks, like the branding of it. Thank you. you feel it. Yeah, feel it is. Yeah, it's fantastic, my friend. Yeah, it just lights, as you mentioned. It does, it does. Yeah. Speaking of which, they are also coming on the Joy Sports Invitational. So if you are, you know, if you are listening to us right now, uh, or watching us right now, and you're wondering what the Joy Sports Invitational is, it's a corporate sporting event that's bringing together a lot of sporting companies or a lot of companies to come and enjoy some camaraderie. It's on October 26th, okay, at the University of Ghana Stadium. Some companies are signing up really quickly. FedEx are coming. FedEx have to come. We are still in the conversation. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, still in conversation. FedEx oh. has no team. We've got a great yeah. team. We have a great team. We've got a great come team. Come and, come and show it. We, we, won, we won tournaments the whole of last year. Oh, wow. We've got a great team. We, we have a great team. Yeah, there's, there's, just, there's just a, a project to, I think, commission around that. But I'm trying, to, yeah. I'm trying to stop that. I'm trying to push that to another date so that we can come, in, come company, and show our level. Another company that said they have a great team who have signed up already as a folder. Yeah. Uh, we went to visit. Uh, and the, 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 the CEO see. said that. There are not enough people in the company because the rest of them are all in the bush training. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and Muftar, before we go into even the highlight, let's, let's take a look at what happened when you visited Safolda. Safolda Venture is known for its excellence in clearing, forwarding, and delivering your goods to your doorstep. But beyond the office wall, there's this incredible atmosphere that binds this group together. This has been executed many times and they are ready to showcase their athletic prowess again at the upcoming Joy Sports Invitational Tournament on October 26 at the University of Ghana Stadium. You want to win how many? Six out of seven. Wow, six out of seven. It's possible, it's possible, it's possible. <laughs> it's possible, it's possible. What are you doing behind the scenes to come and win those six, six medals? We waited for solid years when you went on recess. All along, we were preparing ourselves. We know a day will come. So we were toiling, waiting for you to come. Along last, you've come. So we are prepared already, before you prepared. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. Before we prepared, you were prepared already. This team is leaving nothing to chance. Led by a dedicated chief executive officer, Mr. Adolf Ajay, they are here to redefine corporate fan games and networking. has been sent to Stanford Bridge to work in a public camp. So Asa now is not in here. We'll be back with new tactics and new formations. And, and your team members will score like Old Palmer? More than Kopama, because Kopama can score and give passes. So I have the players. I won't tell you all, the, all, all of them, but I am hiding you from other, other, other corporate teams in that if I tell you a strategy, they will map a strategy to man them. So I won't tell you. Safford Ventures is preparing for a seamless tournament experience, ensuring the team's focus remains solely on their performance. Basically, I have sent my um, team to a hideout place uh, just for them to teach them what they are supposed to do on the field. So basically, when we come on that Saturday, you're going to see what we are going to do on, on the very uh, day of play. In fact, he's Drogba. Do you, do you have Lampard, ACN, oh. do you have... So, so we, have all, we have all the, I mean, the, the foreign players here. We have all of them here. We don't want to mention names, just as the uh, CEO have said, we don't want to mention names so that those people will copy from us. So when we come to the field of play, you're actually going to see what we are going to do. We deliver, and we're going to deliver on that very day. You deliver, you, 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 you deliver across the length and breadth of Ghana, and that day you want to come and, and deliver for us to see. You, the way you're talking, you've not seen what other people have, are bringing to the table. Though. You see, we don't talk, we just don't talk. 
we deliver. That's what I'm telling you. We deliver. You see, like the uh, clearing firm, we clear and we deliver to your doorstep. We are going to deliver and then bring out the cap and all the medals to Safolda. The excitement isn't confined to just the players. Employees from all departments have rallied behind the team, offering encouragement and support. It's become a company-wide affair with the entire Safoda Ventures family rooting for their colleagues to succeed. This is Safoda. You can, you, can, you can see the energy. We are all young men. We play. Okay, so when we don't, we don't lose. Hmm? We always want to win. And we are going to win. You can hear what uh, what CEO said. Six out of seven, just for somebody to be encouraged to come next time. For the, that one, you see, this is the drawback. If I tell you the names of the others, maybe you close the program. <laughs> <laughs> there will be basket full of goals. Mm -hmm. Take it from us. This is Safoda. Mm. <laughs> And again, you don't believe me, eh? <laughs> but anyway, Fever, thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Uh, so for that say they are coming to win everything. Fever will also be playing. No, they didn't say everything. They said six out of seven. They What's the one that they won't win, no? No, they are leaving one. One so for anybody to just... Next time. Yeah. If they for FedEx. Yeah, if they take... Or... For FedEx. So they are bragging. I mean, they are bragging. If we are going to... I mean, all right. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you, anyway. you, you, are doing, you, are doing, you are doing CEO's penalty challenge. Yes. You should do free kicks. They should do free kicks. Oh, today. yeah. Penalty is too easy. Too easy. It's 25 easy. years free kicks. Ah. Killer. You know the, you know the funniest <laughs> thing I heard today? The, I, the, I went to meet the, the Piva Beverages people. The, I met the CEO. He said he went, for some, he, was doing, he went for some other event. They were doing CEO penalty kicks and he trained for the penalty kicks. But on the day when he tried to kick the final, he did a John Terry. <laughs> and he slipped. <laughs> and he said the Astro Tef is not quality. <laughs> Frank, Frank said the Astro Tef is not quality. <sighs> anyway, so that's what it is. Excuses galore. Show up on the day itself, October 26, and you know how you can register. If you want to register, let me actually give you the phone number to call. Register your company, come and participate, okay? Um, the phone number to call is right here, just to register, okay, uh, for the Joy uh, Sports Invitational. Okay, all right, here we go. Hey, this guy's... I can't, it's here, it's here, let me see. Where's the phone number? Give it out. Let me see the phone number. Uh, 0549 uh -huh. 126905. Uh, 54 um, 912 Zero 05. Call and register and let's go. All right, let's bring you some highlights now and get some, um, some serious business underway. Kumasi has and Dukotoko, they got a very impressive 1 0 win against Accra Lions uh, over the weekend to go top of the Ghana Premier League table. So, impressive victory for them. Uh, and then, uh, in fact, let's show you the highlights of that particular game. When we come back here, uh, we can unpack what happened. Is Emmanuel and G for Kotoko. He lays down the pass to Saka Dauda. Saka dribbles a send across. Abdul Karim. This is Kotoko. Albert Abua. What a goal for Kotoko. Kumasi Santi Kotoko. A one up at the Boisele Glen Sports Stadium. A beautiful goal by Albert Abua. Took the ball, drive through the midfield, laid down the pass to Saka Dauda. He took on the defender, sensing the cross. And it was a beautiful connection by Albert Amua. Very good work done from Saka Dauda. He flicked the ball in. All right, so that's Kotoko. Um... Mr. Atreman also got a thumping victory. Of course, there, there was no win for Summer Tex, the, uh, the champions, so not going too great for them. And Midian were also dethroned from the top of the table. But let's take a look at the Mr. Atreman highlights. <laughs>
right, so that's that. Let's look at the four results then from the weekend and then um, look at the table, what it means. So there you go. So actually, man, three on winners over Legon City. Legon City is at bottom. It's not looking good for them. Dreams FC lost at home to Nations FC. Break with Chelsea beat Young Apostles in that BA derby. Bibiani Gold Stars, uh, they got a 1-0 win over Bisham United as well. And as you can see, Karela and Samatek shared the sports at the Ali Muhammad Stadium. Vision FC and Holy Stars. Vision. Um, and then Midyama uh, also being held by Lions, Ajana Stars and Hutter Lions. Uh, Hats of folks, sorry, also ending in a nil-nil draw. Let's look at what this means for the table. After you've shown me English Premier League table. Hey, Pamela, why? Kwatoko, <laughs> uh, 11 points. Gold Stars, 11. Midyama, 10. Nations FC completing the top four. Let's look at the second half of the table. That's where you find Hearts of Oak. Second half of the table. Um, and it's not looking good for Hearts of Oak at the moment. So um, that is what it is as far as that's concerned. Well, it has a folk are so far down, it's like they can't find where has a folk are on the table. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, let's move it on. Guys, um, another interesting weekend of Ghana Premier League football. Uh, Kotoko finally find themselves back on top. There's a lot of conversation about the coverage, isn't it? Yeah. I look, don't want to dwell too much on that. I think it's important because... Um, Look, when you, want to, when you want to sell a content, the packaging of it yeah. and the way you present it, and in this case, in this production and this broadcasting is key. It actually adds to the interest people have. And, and I don't know if they, we need to find a day where we, we educate people about what, what production does and what broadcast is. And I'm very disappointed because we have an FA full of media aspects or media, uh, experienced media men, I should put it that way, because... Certainly what we see on the screen is not something an expert puts out there. But the, the content that we are consuming is not great enough. Yeah. And, I, and I feel sorry for all of us as Ghanaians because we, we know the problems we have, but the barest minimum is to see the game in a different way. And to make it worse, what we were consuming two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, was a lot better than what we are consuming in 2024. And, and that is where my disappointment is. If you are moving away from the, the broadcasters who had the rights a couple of years ago, we should be going into... Another phase which is better. That isn't better. So, yeah. But yeah, on the game itself, it's important that Kotoko got the victory that they got. And, and Prosper Ogume and Kotoko are very much on top of it. They've not played badly this season at all. They've just no, not scored no. a lot of goals. You know, they, they're a difficult team to crack at times, but they are not scoring with the regularity that we, we know that they can have. And that is largely because they don't have that, that like two seasons ago where they would have a two girl last season where they would have. Because they don't have the, the one striker that you can, you can point at and say that he's the source of goals in the club yet. So they might have to share that responsibility a lot more. But if they can keep it tight at the back, and they, can, they can feed on the few goals that they score. I think Kotoko is going to be a force. For hard to folk, they will be disappointed. Yeah. Because a man down, they had opportunities playing in Accra. They had fans through, but they couldn't see it. Off. They also the have the lights. same... Under the lights. They also have the same problem with not, not getting goals you know, in, enough goals scored. So, yeah, it's going, it's going to be a long season for them again if they don't fix that. You're right. Two goals in <clears throat> five matches. Yeah. They are like Man United. They have a negative goal difference right yeah, now. They They've Had considered to... three goals. They've only scored two. And they have five points out of five matches. Five points out of a possible 15. Yeah. That's winning roughly 33%. Not good enough. Of the points available. And... It's simply not good enough. Like, this is where they ended last season. So what exactly have they done at the start of this season? Because it's like nothing has changed. It's, it's, it's really confusing. Now, this is a, this is a you know, top traditional club. Big club. I don't think it's, it's been run like a big club. If, if you finish in the relegation zone for, what, two, three seasons in a row, heads must roll. It's, it's, it's a serious thing for hard to folk to be languishing in those positions. And we should have seen a reaction, a positive reaction this season. But it looks like it's literally picking up where they left off last season, and which is kind of disappointing. For me, the worrying thing is that it's not just the fact that they are not scoring, because last season, Hearts were creating chances but not scoring goals. This time around, they are not necessarily creating chances. Um, they can't even take advantage of numerical of, 
Yeah, and in fact, in that Adriana game, the, the, the clearest chance after the red card was Adriana. Yeah. It was a hard to fool goalkeeper that made a, a sensational <laughs> yes. save. Other than that, yes. Adriana would have, would have won the game, which is, 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 is extremely disappointing. But look, things must change. And again, I just want to touch on the Ligon City situation. It's, it's, it's shocking. It's shocking. If you look at the run they put uh, towards the tail end of last season, I'm talking about the cup, yeah. went all the way to the FA Cup semi-final, and you thought that keeping the experience ahead of uh, Park Wesley Fabian in there, things will sort of balance itself out yeah. this season and at least we'll get some positive performances. They've lost, what, four out of the five games they've played. It's, and, it's unbelievably poor. And, and they are conceding chances for fun, conceding goals for fun. It really doesn't look like anything is going to change now. And it's, it's, it's scary. It looks like they are primed for, for, for relegation as it stands. But again, when you are talking about experience uh, uh, gaffes, you don't want to put it past uh, Park Wesley Fabian to be able to stabilize things. But if he's going to do it, he has to do it sooner rather than later because it's getting late. I've got a message here from Castro Steve from China who says that for the last three seasons, House of Folk are not living up to expectation. Something must be done now to salvage the image of the Darling Cup. And uh, he goes on to say that Chelsea fans should not also be too worried about our draw with Forrest. We shall bounce back after the international break. I said greetings to all Chelsea fans in China. But he does make a very interesting point about House of Folk consistently poor seasons. For the past two seasons, and now, if you add this, that's a third season in a row. House of Oak have not been anywhere near good. And they've had different managers under the same spell. It's almost a very Man United ish kind of situation. And you wonder what's going on. Different players have come in, different managers. The results are not coming together. But the past two seasons, House of Oak have survived relegation on the very last day. And this season, it looks like they could start battling relegation right after match day seven. And it's definitely, like Daniel said, this is a massive football club, and that's not where they should find themselves. At least, it's, it's, it's quite embarrassing. And when you look at the way Togwe and the other people are investing in the club, there should be some sort of, you know, reciprocal performances on the pitch. I mean, you can't invest that much infrastructure, build Povima, look at the new headquarters that they've put, they've put up, and then the club is this poor. You know, last week, they begged the fans to come to the stadium at Legon. People sat in traffic. There were demonstrations. On Friday, there was a lot of traffic in town. Yeah. They okay. went to the stadium, okay, and sat in there and watched a drop nil-nil draw. And the opposition got a red card. They got a, a man sent talk. Hearts of couldn't even carve them open. Like, what exactly do you do in training? Things have to change. And even if that means changing the coach, then so be it. Because as we know, as we know, when Hearts of Oak and uh, Gianna, uh, sorry, Hearts of Oak and Kotoko Kot do well, we know Ghana football does well. And unfortunately, those two have not been good for a while. Hearts of Oak in particular have been abysmal in their dealings. But enough of that. Um, let's move on to England now and talk about some uh, Ghana players that were in action over the weekend. Uh, we'll talk about the Ghanaian players abroad, but in the Premier League in particular, uh, I would like to show you this. Mohamed Kudus got his first goal in 14 matches for both club and country, and that's his first goal of the season for West Ham United in a thumping victory against Ipswich. Take a look at the highlights. All right, um, this one doesn't do justice to uh, a lot of the brilliant saves that we saw in that game. Uh, but we'll try and get you. It was an incredible game of football where the two goalkeepers were basically the, uh, the, the, the star men. And all of that happened in the latter stages of the game anyway. So that's the full result from the weekend. Uh, Brentford beating Wolves 5-3 as well. Arsenal's for one win against that arm thing. And the rest of the result. Now, look at that. Brighton 3-2 against Spurs. Even Spurs were shocked by Spurs. Spurs took a 2-0 lead in the first half, came back in the second half and conceded three goals and lost 3-2 to Brighton. Everton and Newcastle, that ended nil-nil. Um, let's look at what that means for the table, as far as the Premier League is concerned. Liverpool are uh, riding top, 18 points. Man City and Arsenal, just a point behind. Chelsea, uh, also some three points behind. Man City and Arsenal. 
uh, and Aston Villa also with that one or draw uh, with Man United also uh, right there with the same points as Chelsea. All right, Manchester United on the other hand are down in 13th. They're on the second half of the table. Um, guys, we've spoken about Man United a lot. Uh, I want to talk about um, Kudus first of all. Good to have his first goal. He seemed like he was very frustrated at the start of the season. Didn't help that last week he got taken off at halftime. Manager made some comments to the direction of maybe he doesn't necessarily play for the team. This must have been a big relief. So that's how big players respond. That is how players who have got personality and character and real ability respond. There's, there are some players who would have, you know, lost confidence. I and mean, the clear example is Calvin Phillips. He still says that the very moment Pep Guardiola said that he had put on weight, yeah, 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 he yeah. affected him until now. We've seen him. He's never been the same player ever again. Mohamed Kudus got, you know, certain criticism from the manager, but it won't affect him. Yeah. He backs himself. He trusts his ability. He's not even played in his favorite position, but he's given his all. He can always improve, but... In, on the day, he was working so hard off the ball. When he had the ball, he was making the right decisions. And the goal he scored, by the way, was a, a clear sign of a very determined player because he had to go up first and early and still hang on to wait for the ball it to was drop a leap. to him. So his leap was brilliant. And in the end, he got a goal that I thought on the day his performance deserved. But when you've got a player with that personality, that character, when the manager pokes him, he pokes back. Sitcher, let me stay with you. Liverpool and Slot, best ever start to a Liverpool career by any manager in history. I mean, there is a sense that a lot of people think that this is a bubble waiting to bust. But it can't just be. He must be doing something right. He's also got two wins in the Champions League. So what is he doing right? Look, he's not, he's not completely... Look, uh, he's, not, he's not coming to the club and told them that everything you were doing, let's put it that way. He's only coming to the club and ease this ideas you know, into the boys. And I think the boys have embraced it. He's also not necessarily complained about not having A, B, C, D. He's worked with what he's had. So you have a feeling the players are very happy. When he listened to Trent Alexander, I know he said he went to him to tell him that he wants to improve his game in many, many respects, that he feels he can improve. And he embraced that. Now, when you watch Liverpool play, they are, they are a team that is trying to assert a little bit more control. Mm -hmm. They're not going to run at you for 90 minutes like we saw under Jürgen Klopp. He's managing that. They are spells in games so Liverpool can be very slow. But you just don't know when they are going to switch it because it's that one big switch from, you know, Van Dijk to Mo Salah or, or Trent Alexander switching to the other side. And when the front three have got the ball, they are so dynamic, so they are causing problems. But I still think that when you look at Liverpool's fixture that they've had up to this point, it's been kind of games we expect Liverpool to win. Mm -hmm. Look, the game that they lost is a game we expected them to win anyway. At Anfield, against Nottingham for every day, with the greatest respect to them. But I can only win the games that are presented to you, the games that are right. in front of you. But it's going to come after the international break, a period where they are playing very big games, huge games. And I think that is where they are going to be really tested if is the, the bubble is going to burst or they are doing something real. But I like slot. I like the way they play. But I'm waiting for that big test for them. Yeah. And we need to point out that they've won some pretty big games too. They won as a San Siro. Yeah, it's against a they bad... They won at Old uh, Trafford. Uh, look, like I said, <laughs> on paper, they sound big games. <laughs> but we know it's been a struggle at the time Liverpool met them. True. We know Man United have been... Man United have had their worst Premier League starts in the history of the, the, of history the club. Of the club. Mm. So, the so that is the not, context. They're, they're, they're not, yeah. they're not so I want, to see them, I want to see them play against Arsenal. I want to see them play against Chelsea. I want to see them play against Man City. That's, that's fair. Let, let's test what um, your slot has brought on. First of all, the Chelsea game. Uh, actually, let me take you from the Arsenal game. Um, Mickey, again... You know, you're one of the, you're one person. That I like. I don't know whether I want to eat humble pie or what. You said Kai Havertz will come good. He he is coming good. And Boy, he's come good. Coming. Yeah, he's, he's come, come good. He's, he's come, come good. Hey, he's a bad man. He's arrived. He to win something. <laughs> now he used to win something before. Yeah. before. Yes, the so, ghost <laughs> need to mean something. So Saka, Saka no reach. Yeah. Oh, Saka no reach. Odiga no reach. Oh no, no no! If you play, I know we anything. Don't be anything. <laughs> <laughs> you have to, if you, we, if you play... It, no, it's just not true. It's the same with this Arsenal team. Look, that's why I'm praying that they win something. This impressive run that Mikel Arteta has no, had... That's true. It's the same way Kopama is still coming good. He's not... Yeah, no. Good. Ah, but you, you are not Chelsea fan going to so, see somewhere and say, Kopama, we reach... He has to win something. With Chelsea or with Real Madrid, he will win something. 
Ah, you've already sold the money to Real Madrid. You are talking about. You've already sold your best asset to Real Madrid. But where Copa will reach right now? If he leaves Chelsea, where is he going? So you're saying that where he reach right now, it's not Chelsea, but it's about Chelsea. No, I say. That's what you just said. You are not listening to me. You just saw the guy. You saw the guy. Either he wins something now, or he goes to Real Madrid to win. Why Real Madrid? Isn't that the because Chelsea Because if thing? you leave Chelsea, that's the only logical next step. There's no other no logical next step if you leave Chelsea. If you leave Chelsea, where are you going? You are going to, boy, Man United or Liverpool. Oh, but you saw Joao Mata. Joao Mata left, and then what happened? He went to Man United. Did he win Champions League there? Uh, no. No, he said, where, where he go? He won something. I said a logical next step. And he was asking he, about asking he, you. Go. He, Mata left Chelsea, went to Manchester United. But it was not a next step. It was a step. <laughs> Sideways. <laughs> Square pass. I see, I, see. I see what you did there. Ah. Ah. Are you ah. true? He it's left Chelsea to go to Man United. <laughs> you know, you, 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 nothing happened. But you see, on a more serious note, Kayaves did come good. He's scoring a lot of goals. Yeah. Bottom line, look, look, I'm, you know, I'm, I was raised well. So when I have been wrong, I will admit it. I thought he, I didn't think that he was going to be this good yeah. um, at Arsenal. It was an Ateta problem, not yeah. your problem. So he's scoring a lot more uh, goals uh, right now for Arsenal than he was scoring at Chelsea, yeah. uh, granted. you know. But even in the larger scale of the argument about Chelsea, Kai Havertz, and um, Arsenal, Kai Havertz, you know, you always, I think ultimately, that whole happiness thing, it would be a lot happier if he if he if he were to win something. And I think I hope that he does. But let's talk about the performance of not just him, but that Arsenal team coming from behind against Southampton, grinding out the results, showing some character, um, playing with a certain emotion and passion. It's beautiful to watch. Yeah, it's 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 beautiful to watch from the emotional side. But mm -hmm. from the analytical side, I think at, Arsenal's defence hasn't impressed me this season. The one they compared to John Terry yeah, and Cavalier. It's, it's, it's not impressed me this season. For, from what they did last season, we expected. And when you look at what they did last season, you compare... How many have you considered so far, by the way? Three? Uh, six yeah. schools. Yeah. Oh, six wow. schools. They are still the best performing defence in the Premier League or something. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Are they? Yeah. With six was conceded. Yes. I think they're still the best performing. I think they'll be, mm. they'll be around. Yeah. No, it's possible. Yeah. yeah. But for me, I'm looking at the teams they faced. Arsenal at home against Southampton shouldn't be conceded. Shouldn't be conceded the chances they were conceded. Last week, they conceded two goals against Leicester City. Then, yes, the Man City game, obviously. Man City are a big team. Uh -huh. It's Liverpool considered two goals. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, yeah. two goals. Yeah. So so Liverpool, Liverpool, yeah. so Liverpool, Liverpool is, yeah. But my issue is, they've... Last week's game against Leicester and this game against Southampton, two teams that are obviously going to be battling relegation this season. You shouldn't be struggling at the Emirates against them. And for me, that's, that's where my problem is. Yes, you, you, would, you would lord Arsenal's character coming from uh, being pegged back 2-2, two, two, the ability to come back and, and, and score a third and a fourth. And then it happened again, um, conceding a second half goal against uh, Southampton, rallying back, equalising soon after... At uh, second, third goal. What has changed about their defense, though? It, 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 we know it's, it's more recently now brought in Timba, he's fit again, Calafiri is playing. Is it personal or there's something about the team that has. Mm. I don't. I, to be frank, to be frank, the system looks the same. And what is happening. It's a very funny thing because when I watch it, the thinking behind what they are doing this season seems like it will, be, it will make them a bit more difficult to break down. Yeah. Because Timba is better in dealing with defensive situations than um, who was playing on the right. Right, so Ben Chenko White. Than, uh, uh, yes, it's only recently Timba came. But when yeah. Timba was playing oh, on the left, on the left side, yeah. better than Zinchenko, better than Kivio. Kivio. When he comes in, he's a bit more comfortable. Calafuri now playing on the left-hand yeah. side, coming in is more comfortable. He's a better defender than Kivio, than Zinchenko. Timba on the right is better than uh, uh, Rice. With pate, with rice, it, it looks like it should be more. It should compact. be more compact, mm. but I, I just don't understand why they seem a bit too too porous. And, and yeah, now you mentioned it also pops up because I think David Raya has been called upon a lot more than he would have else. otherwise last yeah, season, true. and he's he's been brilliant for them. Since otherwise, they would have been considering a lot more yeah. goals. So that's that's where my issue is. And again, um, we're talking about this off air. 
Arteta can chop and change things in, in terms of <clears throat> in terms of the personnel that he has. Yeah. He has a bit more options to chop and change things. But Partey playing at right back. Although Partey did well, this is, what, this is how you need to assess it. We are not assessing the individual performance. We are mm -hmm. assessing what he did to the team. And Partey playing at right back, I don't think he helped Arsenal too much. I think Arsenal need him in the centre. They need him in the centre. He and Jorginho can do a similar job, but they offer... Partey is a bit more athletic. He can uh, cover spaces better than uh, Jorginho, close down those spaces, has better defences ante anticipation than Jorginho. Jorginho will give you that control. And although Arsenal were possessing the ball, any time uh, uh, um, Southampton picked up the ball in transition, there were spaces to exploit. Mm. And for me, that is something that Arteta seriously needs to, needs to work on. Obviously, Merino is back. Hopefully, Origado will come soon. When they have the full complement of the team, maybe some of these things will begin to, to, to mm. uh, settle down and we'll see the, the real Arsenal. But again, I always say that even whilst you are struggling, even whilst you are attempting to fix problems, it's always important to pick up the results. And that's what Arsenal are doing. They are not waiting. They are not waiting for everybody to come back before they start playing. You don't necessarily have to... If you're a championship team, you don't necessarily have to play well every week to get the points. And that's what they are doing, and I think that's what's important. So um, we can let this slide. And, um, yeah. Mm. Fair enough. And, you know, um, you know, the point you're making... Is, so, basically, you're saying that by playing party at right back, what they sacrifice in midfield is far greater than what they gained. Uh, yeah, but I think, I think, I, I think right. again, when you play Pate, his pass selection and his, his ability to pick risky passes, yet almost always spot on, yeah. those vertical balls. So it sends Arsenal going forward a lot more. Yeah. Jorginho will keep it calm. he hold on to the ball, pick the right pass. Not necessarily sending the team forward. He can pick the side pass, yes, but it was the right pass because at that time everything is crowded. But Pate is, has that extra ability it to pick, fizz it through yeah. bodies and send the team into the next phase. And that is what they missed. I thought in the game against Southampton. But you see, that the Jorginho thing would work, and we saw it work last season, yeah. when Odegaard is playing ahead of him. Brilliant. Because then, he, the, the creativity is with yeah. Right, right ahead. Partey will not necessarily need Odegaard to be able to pick those passes and create mm -hmm. chances from mm -hmm. deep. And that's what Arsenal may lack. And you see, that extra pass will allow the opposition to, to set up, yeah. restructure, set up. Their defence is now a bit more difficult to break down. Obviously, Havertz is not... When, even when he was dropping into the Odegaard position, Havertz can't pick those passes that, that Odegaard can pick. So... And hopefully the captain comes back soon and then we see uh, how well this team can. But Are they still within the league? Oh, of course we win. Right. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you. What. The, the, closest, the closest is Man City. And we are beginning to hey, see some The prophet is back again. He just started very early. Very, oh, very you've, early. You've given a prediction on who you think will win. Mm. He has given a I prediction on who you... Me too, I said my own. Uh, 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 are you good? Are you good? All right. Listen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You're watching Sports Zone on Joy Prime. Your messages are welcome. Uh, okay, uh, they're welcome. Uh, send them through. I've seen. I've seen lots of messages here. I'll read a lot of them when I come back from this very break. But we also have Guinness Match Day for you and Ghanaian players abroad. So we've still got a lot to cover here on the show. Uh, we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. This is Sports Zone on Joy Prime. Um, we are very happy to be here. Show proudly sponsored by Guinness by. Uh, Kivo 4 in one Gary Mix, and by Syntex Tank, and soon by Piva, who are providing me with a lot of water energy this evening. Thank you very much. Um, I've got lots of your messages here, but it's time for Guinness Match Day. I'll read them after Daniel Crouton goes to the tactical screen. Danny K, what have you got for us tonight? The reason why I don't think Man City will win the league. Oh, that's what... <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> okay. Um, why? Please say. Why would Man City win the league? Look. Pep Guardiola. Mm -hmm. Pep Guardiola's defensive prowess hasn't been... It's not something that he's given a lot of credit for. Yeah. But season after season, he's either best defense or second best defense. Right. And that is based on how his team suffocates the opposition of the ball. And they're able to quickly counter-press when they win. So... All your, your, your strategy and your tactics, okay, when we get the ball, this is what we do. You will never get the time to be able to pick your passes or think to, because City, Bayern, Barcelona will suffocate you and win the ball. Right. But, but it's always like this. They rise, they plateau, then they... And I think City are, are dipping mm. in terms of the ability to quickly win the ball back. 
teams this season are either being able to play through their press a bit more easily and are taking advantage of their high line, or in transition, when they win the ball of City, City struggle with the counter press. And the numbers that the opposition teams, you see, that's bravery. They're brave with the opposition teams to commit numbers for it when they are counter pressing in terms of transitions. Yeah. It's getting to Man City, and they're conceding a lot of chances, a lot of good goal scoring chances. Like against Fulham. Like against Fulham, like against Newcastle, like against Brentford. Now, two of those three games I've mentioned were at home. And it was Edison who was making really good saves. Now, the reason why it's a problem and the reason why I think eventually it will break is because of the goalkeeper in question. Edison is not the goalkeeper who's had a, a high save percentage over his. So when you look at the average and you look at what he's doing, he can only do up to a certain point. Mm. And if this thing persists, it's not every day that Adama Traore will be on the opposition team. Right. One day, one day, one day. <laughs> it will be Mohamed Salah. It will be Mohamed Salah. <laughs> it will be Saka. It will be Saka. Oh, it will be Kupa. It will be, right. be Rasmus Oyland. Let's see the nature of the challenge so, you're talking about. No, and you see, I was thinking about it, mm -hmm. and I tried to trace where I saw the frequency from. Okay. Last season, when Chelsea went to Etihad, yes. you guys remember, transition football, in fact, it was, it was Gallagher and uh, uh, Nicolas. Nicolas Jackson. When Man United went to Etihad, yeah. the first 20, 25 minutes, it could easily have been 2 0 to United, 2 3 0 if we are in terms of scenarios that they created. But teams are getting braver and braver against Man City. And again, with the injury to Rodri, I think this, this, uh, 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 this, this thing is going to continue to brew and I think it's going to get even more as the season progresses because teams now know that Man City will not have as much control in terms of comfort as they will have. Kovacic can't give you that control that uh, Rodri can give you and there's nobody on the Man City bench who can do that who is in the profile of Rodri. So Man City are going to struggle in that regard. The turnovers are going to be a bit more. You'll be able to force them into turnovers and you'll be able to be, you, you, you'll be able to uh, counter-press them. Now, you... Okay. Let's look at this first one. This is Fulham. Okay. The first opportunity of the game. And this is where the game plan was very clear. For my Man City set piece, Leno picks the ball up. Instruction is quickly. Don't allow them to set up. So this is a transition moment. And Leno, quick, 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 quick. Rolls it into Robinson. The outside of the pass... And it sets Aquas for like on a level, like guy we should be scoring. Guy that. we Adama for Adama. <laughs> what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? No, seriously, seriously. <laughs> like I don't know if you guys remember. I think it was last year when we were talking about Kamal Din Sulemana. Yes. And I liken him to Adama. if he doesn't take care. Adama has strength. He has pace. He can dribble. He can hold up. He can do everything. But finish. End product. No, the end product. And the end product comes he is here. Right. When to dribble, when to finesse, when to chip, when to round the goalkeeper. He has everything and he can do it. But he doesn't know when to. But this, you see it. Obviously, from a, a, a transition... Uh, um, yeah, Man City caught in transition. All right. Uh, um, Great chance. Piece. Great Should've, chance. Could have been a goal. Could have been a goal. Yeah. Should have been a goal. All right. Then... Fulham again. Okay. Fulham again. So, City win it. This is Man City applying pressure on Fulham. In possession. In possession. Lose pass immediately. Now, look at the bodies that Fulham are, are committing to the counter-attack. And, and that's, that's the thing. You see, in the past, teams won't commit too many bodies because the likelihood that when you lose it, Man City was we'll get it back. also very dangerous in transition. They will get it back. Yes. But you see, teams have realized that that is their weakness. And without that control, without the pace in their recovery runs, especially when, uh, if it's not on Kawaka's side, Kawaka, yeah. exactly, you have a and real with Adama, chance. It doesn't matter with which Adama, side. it doesn't matter. <laughs> so we see Fulham committing bodies for it. Look at the runs. There's one, there's two, there's three. The, the, the... So this is a three on two. Yeah. Just like that, Fulham have created a three on two. And once again, Adama from Fadama, 
has blasted a ball. <laughs> Adam Howard. Who is for Van Damme? This guy, I don't know. <laughs> See, he should have scored. This, these are ball. two clear cut opportunities. Yeah. Clear cut Both opportunities. Exactly. And this is something that this chance, for example, as the season progresses, this is not something that the, the stats will capture. So they will show you the saves that Edison will make. But Edison didn't need to make a save this game. But this was a very good chance. Should have been a good. This should have been a good. Mm. So we look at number three. Hey, you have plenty. I have plenty. <laughs> I said, man, City, the league don't win. Now, this is City again. Fulham win the ball back. Instant, look at this. Boom! Because he knows it's Fadama. Fadama, one on one. Again, gets cooked. Gets cooked. One on one. He misses again. Now, you see. A hat trick of missed chances. How? This is a, it's a clear cut game plan. Right. And you can tell. Jimenez didn't need to think. As soon as he received the ball, boom, into the space, exploiting City's high line, running in behind. A chance that Fadama should have scored, unfortunately for uh, Marco Silva. He failed. And then this one again. Now, this one another just shows one me. Fulham. Yeah, another one against Fulham. Now, this one shows me how teams are not afraid to play through Man City's press. Now, they won the ball a bit high up. Uh, no, this is not high. Deep in their own half. And Man City are a bit lax in their pressing. And it's something I've noticed over the past few months. City are not as aggressive in their counter press as they used to be. So Fulham are able to play through the press, exploit the spaces in between the lines. And then it was a really good opportunity. Robinson cutting it back. This, this is a chance. This is a really good chance. And it ends up being a very good block form. Um, uh, Vadio, and this is another scenario that Fulham could have taken. So I watched the thing and I was looking at these uh, scenarios and I said, ah, I've seen this thing somewhere this season before. Uh -huh. So I went back to the Newcastle game and look at how Newcastle were confident playing through Man City. In fact, this game, Newcastle didn't, they didn't sit deep. It was mid-block, but also a high line. They were pushing Man City. It was like, you they push me, I push them. you. Matching them. Mm. So, Newcastle win the ball in their half and immediately committing bodies for it. This is very similar to the Adama Fadama one. Murphy wins the ball, plays it back in between the lines. There are spaces there. And this was their first opportunity. They've opened Man City up, good block, but it's just an indication of the weaknesses that Manchester City have, especially when they are retreating in their uh, defensive block. Now, again, this just shows you, see? So this is Newcastle with a pretty high line. They've committed bodies forward. So you look at Newcastle's line. They are in possession of the ball. They are not afraid to come forward and apply pressure on Manchester City. All those City that themselves... That is very high. That's very high. That's bold. And very exactly. rare. To and very rare. To do against City, yeah. But you will see more of it this season. Because teams are not as afraid as, uh, uh, of Man City. The as teams are to. opening. Yes. So, one, two passes. And then look at this. Through ball, Man City's high line is, ex is exploited. So, when you are playing a high line like this, just as I said about Man United last season, if you are playing this a line this high, mm -hmm. and you are against opposition players that have pace. So there was Gordon in there, there was Harvey Barnes in there. Pacey players who are looking to pick up the, 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 the spaces and, and, and exploit your high line. Players like Bruno Gumarez who picked the final pass should not be given the space that they were, they were given. There was almost no pressure on the ball. It was Joel Linton who dropped deep to pick it up. One pass to Bruno, through ball to, to Gordon. As simple as that, Newcastle have created it. And this was a penalty that led to their goal. Then Newcastle again. Okay, this is seven. Newcastle again. Pressing Man City high up, winning the ball off Manchester City. And then one, two passes, they were through. Now, how often do you see teams pressing Manchester City high? They are not afraid again. Very rare. This was another chance. Edison with a save. So, again, teams are getting braver against Manchester City. The fact that you've picked up eight movements means it's, it's a it's it's, a, it's, a, it's a Newcastle won the ball high up again. Yeah. And then look at the bravery and look at the bodies they are committing. Yes, you might say they are at home. But look, long staff. If this two was Trent Alexander Arnold, ta it him. <laughs> it's a goal. <laughs> but you see, my issue is Manchester City will not keep escaping these moments. Teams but will, will they watch keep it. Making the mistakes though. Oh, yes. 
And let me tell you why. Mm. Again, it didn't start this season. We saw it against Brentford. And you see, when teams go in as brave as... The Brentford game ended with 2-1. Mm -hmm. And Brentford had opportunities to, to score. An opposition coach would look at this Fulham game and tell themselves, look, I have a better finisher than Fadama. So if it's me, I might be rewarded. They will not be afraid because Manchester City didn't punish the teams in transition. Man City did their thing in possession, created spaces. But in transition, they are there for the taking. So teams are going to get braver. Maybe if Ten Hag is still in the job, he will, he will be able to counter with you the Garnachos era. Thing. We even saw it in the, in the community shoes. If you remember, the community shoes, United's goal, it was off transition. Pick the ball, gave it to Garnacho, cut in, boom. So, All right. this thing, Interesting. this thing will win the league. What do you think about that? No, I'm mean, a great pick out by, by, by Danny. And, and it, is coming back. And, and to extent, if, 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 you, if you extend it to their, their first game against Chelsea, there were scenarios like that yeah. where Chelsea, yeah. Chelsea, when Chelsea won the ball, they could have caused them problems. The, the only problem, or the only thing though is, the manager making these decisions for Man City is Pep Guardiola. Mm. And Pep Guardiola doesn't turn to play one way throughout a season. I think he rectifies this. And, and, and that is why it's so difficult to be because when managers think they found the antidote to this juggernaut of a club, he, he just reintroduces something that in the end, mm -hmm. nobody really figures him out. So midway through the season, I guarantee you Pep Guardiola's team is going to change. And traditionally though, Pep's team never really starts the season well. Had long season last season. Most of his players have been away on international duty. They, are, they are tended to be slow started. They've not been slow started this season. The gaps are there as Danny points them out. But I think City will fix them. And that's why they are still my favorites. But if they don't fix what Danny has pointed out, they will be in trouble. They will be in trouble. All right. So that's that for Guinness Match Day. Thank you very much, Danny K. Thank you, Sicho, for that brilliant analysis. What I'm going to do now uh, is um, bring you... Uh, some messages, and then we get ready for uh, Karim as he sets up for Ghanaian players abroad. Um, okay, so Eric Ten Hag must be sacked quick. Three years of spending huge monies uh, on his own ex-players. Still, no playing identity. The Sakura fraud must be sacked, including Rashford, Maguire, Bruno, Anthony. They should all follow him out. King Selassie from Adenta Pantine sent us that message. Hi, guys. This is Wilson from Ho. I'm just laughing at you here, trying to find reasons why City won't win the league. But your favorite will. Uh, we've been here for years. We've seen this before. And I thought um, you, be, you would have learned your lessons by now. Hmm. Uh, you don't uh, know Pepe. Eh? We'll all be here by May, and it will be the same old story. Interesting one. Pepino. Uh, <laughs> Good evening, guys. I'm Papyrus Aroma. I'm watching you live from Agona Hanta. Papyrus Roma. Ah, uh, okay. I thought it was Papyrus. Papyrus Aroma is his name. Papyrus Aroma. That's his name. All right. Interesting. Um, um, watching you live from Agona Ahanta. You guys are doing a fantastic analysis. Keep it up. More fire the Gunners. Okay. Interesting. Uh, this message says, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Olua Joseph from Nigeria. Man United... Refused to take photos against Porto with three all draw and one red card after their draw at Villa uh, ended nil nil. They are now a draw FC. Okay. Uh, this one says, in case you remember that KDB is coming back and if the teams keep pushing forward, like you said, KDB picks our pass and Haaland scores. He should wait <laughs> till the end of the season for he and his ass not to cry. This is from the Lima in Nalerugu. This message says, I'm Oliver from Cliff uh, or Clave. Uh, in Volta, please tell the Black Stars that I'm the only supporter left in my house. If they don't win on Thursday, I'll run away from the house, please. <laughs> yeah, salam alaikum, friend to alaikum salam. My greetings to all your panels. This is from Sheikh uh, Bello in Tadi, or is Sheikh Bello Tadi sent us that message. Friend, as you see, friend, you see, as for a game, like when you get a chance, every blessed player will decide to score. Oh my and God. the goalkeeper will also decide to catch the ball. So when both decide together, then you miss the chance. Oh. Ugugu decided differently, and Cels also decided differently. Mm -hmm. And their decision was together. That's why Cels was able to <laughs> save the ball. But I think next time, Ugugu will raise his head <laughs> and put the ball in the net. Oh, 2022. 2022. 
But the most serious note, in the game is we played the next 30 minutes, it was still ending a draw. I like what Mareska is doing at Chelsea, and trust me, they'll have a good season. He should just get a balance in defence, and Everton will be fine. Super! From Adenta sent us that message. This one says, you watch the highlights of our Premier League games on TV, and you think you're watching Saito School JHS football competition. We are far from doing football in this country. Pathetic. Citizen Kasim, Chelsea, Hine, uh, with that message. Uh, this message uh, says, um, could you even please update us on Paul Pogba? Uh, well, Tariki, what's the update? Justice has been saved. Yeah? Justice has been saved. So Pogba will return Start to training. training in January and he'll be back in March. They've reduced his ban from five years to... From four to, four to 18, 18 months. months. So 18 months. Yeah. So he's back in January, like Daniel said. He'll be training and with The most defense. important thing is that the cast ruling determined that it was not intentional. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Fair enough. Like, I, and I wonder whether it was intentional when we were... During the show, then Pamela was showing uh, DJ uh, people in the studio. I don't know what was happening over there. But let's go to Karim now, who's ready for Ghanaian players abroad. Karim, welcome to the show, my friend. Daniel wanted an opportunity to talk about. <laughs> he, was... oh, he gave me the opportunity. Ah, but justice has been served. You know yes, what I'm happy to. Eh. You know, I always come bearing news. Eh? Yes, yes. I give you the news. Give us the news. This one there is breaking news. Eh? <laughs> what, what? Thomas Fati will not be playing against Sudan. Yeah. And not only him, Joseph Pencil, Osman Bukari, and Kinsley Schindler. Schindler, he will miss. But ah, <laughs> Pate, there's news. So let me Pence. just read the statement. Thomas, this is from the GFA website. Thomas is unavailable to join the Black Stars due to medical issues he is currently experiencing and his club has scheduled him mm -hmm. for further tests in the coming days. Mm, interesting. So that is, uh, those are four players out. It means four are coming in. Who are those coming in? Michael Bedu, okay. Abu Frank. Oh, finally. Michael <laughs> Bedu, yes. that coach Otto Ado said, said plays in Sweden, and the league there is not as strong as Premier League. The Premier League. So you call him? Michael Bedu. But I scored him. Eh, because the Premier League guy is gone. <laughs> 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 Michael Bedou Abu Francis, your friend Ibrahim Sadiq, first one for him. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. Then Jonas Ajeti was part of the last squad. Then. Uh, that, okay. That's, that's happy for them. They're welcome. Yeah, yeah obviously. So, individual, yeah. That's big trouble. Mm -hmm. So, I prepared this without all this in mind. And what I did was that I picked out some particular players from the 25 man squad just to look at their performances from the last international break, others extending beyond that. Okay. And one player that has really caught fire from the last international break is Inyaki Williams. For, uh, four games after the international break, he has uh, seven games actually, he has played for Athletic Club after the international break. He scored four goals, uh, actually it's three assists, uh, four assists and two goals, so it's the reverse. Before the international break, he has not scored a goal and he has not provided an assist. Um, is he yesterday or on Sunday? If he had scored, they were queuing up to miss uh, penalties against. Is it Juno now? They missed two Juno penalties yeah. in the match. Uh, three. Three of them. Three. Yeah. Three, three, three different players. Yeah, three penalties. Yeah. And he was one. If he had scored, he would have had now three goals. Yeah, speaking of which, that that's moved out how that Bundesliga too much. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> they were, that they were that giving that away the boss. <laughs> so, that's the what Champions League. No, no, that's uh, not the same thing. Okay. I said it. I said it. It's not the same thing. So, this is like. Bro. It's not the same thing. So, the first two, three players after the international break, they were like the best. They have upped their game after coming for oh, the, the two oh, games ahala. against. And Inyaki Williams is one of them. The other two are. Then um, Mohamed Salisu, after the international break two, he has played five games for Monaco. Two of them in the Champions League and three in the League 1. In those uh, five games he has played, he got his first ever champ uh, goal in the Champions League in only his second game when uh, Monaco drew 2-2 two -two against Dynamo Zagreb. And this is in League 1. The whole of this season he has played. Out of those... I think seven or so games he has played in the league. Ah, he's averaging per 90 minutes, 62 passes. 
And if you are looking at that 62, in the whole of the best team, this is in the best team in the league, huh? that is Monaco, because they are top of the league. Mm -hmm. If you are not top of the league, you are not the best team in that country. And they are top with... Uh, uh, top is of he the averaging league. the highest number of passes? Yes, per players in the Monaco team. Yes. He's the player averaging the most passes. And we are looking for ball playing centre backs. Maybe he shows that to us against Sudan. We would love it so much. Mm. Average blocks per game. That is every game he has played in league. And this season, he's averaging one block per game. And if you are looking at it again, average clearances per game. Four. He's making four clearances per game this season. And that is the third highest for any player for his Monaco. And then Ali Disedi is the last of the three players who have been in the ascendancy since the last international break. For Rene, in the September, the month of September, he was named their player of the month. That is because of the exceptional month he's had for them. He could have added a goal to that, but his goal against PSG was allowed, uh, chopped off. And if you are looking fraudulently, at... Fraudulently, fraudulently, <laughs> fraudulently. That was a goal. <laughs> fraudulently, I've added his mm -hmm. justice. Then, I average tackles he's won uh, per game is two. That is uh, 1.8, but I rounded it up to two. And then, average blocks per 90 minutes is one. And then, average interceptions per 90 minutes, 1.4. If you are looking at all these three, for uh, start Rene players, he's the third player in all, ranking number three in all of those. And then let's move on to Tariq Lamte. This is like players who have also declined in their performances for their clubs after the um, September international break. Tariq Lamte, out of five games that Brighton have played. Since the last international since the break. Last international he's only break. played one he, and, and eight minutes. minutes. Eight minutes. Wow. Out of a possible 450 minutes available to wow. any player at Brighton, he's came on as just a substitute, just eight minutes for them. Not getting a number of uh, the games he would have loved, but when he shows up for Ghana, he, should, he, puts on, uh, he puts up decent performances. Another player, he missed out on the September, uh, September games, but after all those troubles of transfer, saga, and all that, five games Monaco has played this season. Leon. Leon, uh, Leon has played. Was he in the last squad? No, no he, he was, was injured. Okay. So, those five games, he's featured in four of them and started just one. Those five games, he could have played a possible 450 minutes. He played just above 90. 135 minutes for Lyon. No goal, no assist this season yet. Maybe he recovers in time and okay. comes to show his. So I was preparing this with this uh, mindset that Ibrahim Sadiq was not in the Black Star squad for these games. But now so he's in the squad. Comparatively, so, this is what he's done. Yes. So from those, the same time, the September international break, up to this point, he has played four games. And in those four games, he has scored three goals and provided two assists. So but that, he was originally left out. Yes. That's my point. So that mm. was what I was coming to see okay. players like them, what they would have, they would have been asking themselves questions, what they have to do to get a chance. But now, his chance has come. Hopefully, he gets some minutes and shows what he can do. Then, the biggest player from the players that were left or out of the squad is Michael Bedu. He plays for Ellsberg. And a big night for him on last Thursday, they played against AS Roma in the Europa League, and he was the captain. Having this on your hand is no small job. Playing in the Europa League is no small competition. And Chris Whitton was asked about him specifically in that press conference, and he said he didn't invite him because... Otuadu. Otuadu. Ha, Chris Whitton. <laughs> <laughs> Otuadu said the Premier League is not as competitive as the Swiss... Uh, Swede, uh, Swede, the Swedish Swiss League, or is it Sweden is what? Swedish League. Swedish League. He Did can't you... say Swedish or what? <laughs> you can't. What did I say? Swedish League. All right. Okay. And this season he's played... Their, their league system goes like the American system. It's the year round they are doing it. So in 35 games he has played this season. This is like from the last international break, like any other player. Seven games, he has scored two goals and provided okay. assists. But the whole of the season, 35 games he has played, and he scored 14 goals and provided seven assists. So overall, this season he's their star, the star player for his team. And 10, the 10 goals he has scored in the league, is the highest for his team and provide the second most assists. That is three. And then this guy, he's a new entrant to the team. 
um, a Afful, Isaac Afful, he plays for Summertex and in the CAF Champions League and the Ghana Premier League, he has played four games each. He's that speedy left uh, back who can go up and down the field. Hopefully, he gets his chance in those um, eight games he has played in the CAF Champions League against Victoria United when they came to their cross Stadium. He scored the only goal and they won 1-0 and went to meet Raja and it didn't go well for them. That is it. Fantastic, Karim. Thank you very much. Karim <laughs> with Ghanaian players abroad. Uh, I've got a message here that says, great observation by Danny, but yes, Pep will resolve this, like Sicho said. Ubuntu from Takradi with that message. This message says, Danny K should relax. He should check the history of the subsequent seasons and how City plays the league. They start slowly, feeling their way into the league, and then midway, they reconfigure. They should check the latter part of last season and how City played. I wonder why... He keeps doubting Guardiola when he keeps proving him wrong. The air shall justify the means. Analysis, Ningi, nah, Beto, Zoom. SK in Suyane sent us that message. Man United's problem is really spiritual because when we even change Eric Ten Hag and bring another manager, it's still going to be the same. The management ought to do something about the spiritual side because David De Gea said it before he leaving that, that he thinks that the team has been cursed. The truth is, I don't know what's going on. I really don't. So they ought to do something. It's really serious. I kind of worried as a United fan. I still have some time to show you something from uh, La Liga. A first half hat trick for Rob Lewandowski propelled Barcelona to the top of the La Liga table. All right, uh, so uh, apologies for that. Um, they, they couldn't find the highlights. It's that Sports Zone has been attacked by spiritual issues. Spiritual forces. <laughs> like Man United. <laughs> oh, God. They are not praying. They are not praying. They are not, the it, 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 they are not praying. Barcelona fans attack the producers. <laughs>